to the Concepts of Faith broadcast. This program is dedicated to teaching you how to put the Word of God to work so that it will make a positive difference in the everyday circumstances of your life. Heart healthy diets, heart healthy recipes, cardio exercise for your heart, your physical heart that is. Yes, your physical heart that pumps blood is important. Without it you die, but what about your unseen heart, your innermost being? The part of you that you say is breaking from pain and from hurt. Proverbs 4.23 says, Keep and guard your heart with all vigilance and above all that you guard, for out of it flows the springs of life. Mm. You need a plan to protect the most important part of you. Everything in life flows from it. My guest again today is Kathy Mink, and we are going to share some strategies with our viewers. Welcome back, Kathy, Thank on the you, second Annette. part. Thank you so much. This program is so important, these three programs yes. that we're doing. And I hope people will order them on DVD and share them with friends. Yes. Can you imagine what could happen if you invited yeah. some friends in that suffer from rejection, discouragement, depression, and together you watch yes. these and broke free. Have a mighty army that would raise up. Yes. And do the works of God and live in victory. That's right. Because you have to get free from rejection, inferiority. You have to learn to protect your heart and how to be strong in the Lord. That's right. You know, when in the introduction part, um, we talked about, you know, that we're to guard and protect our heart with all vigilance and above all that we guard. I want to read that from the Amplified. Go ahead. I just have to read it, Kathy. Good. I just love this <laughs> scripture. It says, Proverbs 420, my son, attend to my words, consent and submit to my sayings. Let them not depart from your sight. Keep them in the center of your Heart. Heart. <laughs> Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life to those that find them, healing and health to all their flesh. I'm going to get, I want to preach, but I want to read the, the next one. Verse 23 Keep your heart with all vigilance or diligence. And above all that you guard, for out of it flow the springs of life. The most important part of you is your innermost being. And here it says, I want to make note here before we really get started, but it says, keep them in the center of your heart. The very center of your heart. If your spiritual heart is healthy, your physical heart will be healthy. Isn't that amazing? Because it works that way. It says, for they are life to those that find them, healing and health to all their flesh. And when it says, keep your heart with all vigilance and diligence. I preached on this and I studied this scripture. And what that means when it says, keep your heart with all diligence and above all that you guard, it means actually it says, guard, protect, maintain, Set watch. Now, this is the good one. It says, hedge about with thorns. Oh, I like that. Talk about boundaries. <laughs> that must be why the Lord gave, gave me this revelation last week. I went to a florist to get some flowers, and the lady said, who are you getting them for? And I said, me, I want to bless myself. <laughs> <laughs> and so ended up, she gave me some roses that were a new uh, blend. They had ruffled petals that were beautiful, Annette. And she said, these are going to have to be given away tomorrow. They looked fresh to me. Wow. But you know, they have their ways. So I'm just going to give you these. 
I had favor. I was so blessed. So yeah. as I was putting them in a vase at home, I said, Lynn, those roses are the most beautiful, but they have the most vicious thorns on the stems I have ever seen or felt in my wow, life. Wow, really? And I said, you know what? I think the Lord's telling me that we are His beautiful roses, women, but He has put thorns around the stem that we are protected. Isn't that what it said? Yes, yes. Read it again. Yes, it says, keep your heart with all vigilance, diligence, and above all that you guard. For and there, out of it are there, the springs of life. We're to guard, we're to resist the thorns or the attacks of the enemy. Yeah. to pull us down. I mean, Annette, people commit suicide every day. Yes, yes. From Very rejection, sad. depression, insecurity. Yeah. But what I love about guarding ourselves is that we are equal. It is fair. We are equal in our ability to do it. We guard what comes into our eyes, mm -hmm. what comes into our ears, and we're in control of what comes out of our mouths, which then goes into yes. our hearts yes. and lodges. Yes, isn't that what Jesus was talking about with the parable of the sower in Mark chapter four, when he said the sower sows the word and the ground has to be prepared because if it falls among the rocks, then it won't take root. If the thorns spring up, it'll choke it. So he's saying is the heart the soil is the soil. It's our spiritual production center. Yes, it is. And that so, is a great way to put it. Yes, and so if it's our spiritual production center, then we want to be very careful what goes into the ground, take root and springs up. And unfortunately, a lot of people, a lot of people watching today, and I have included myself, I confess in the past, I have taken in and accepted those thoughts and those words of other people about who I was and their words of the enemy. That's right. And they got planted in and you know what happened? It grew up and it produced more rejection. It produced more hurt. It's like you talked about on the last program. It's just a cycle. That's right. It that continues. And let me give you another scripture that is right with that. It is Proverbs 18, 14. And the King James says, the spirit of a man or the heart of, of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit, who can bear? Young's literal translation says, the spirit of a man sustaineth his sickness. You can be healed from your yes. spirit, can drive sickness off your body if you yes. have the word in your spirit. But a smitten spirit, who can bear? Yeah. When your spirit or your soulish area is cast down and defeated and goes into sickness and depression, sickness of the emotions. Well, sickness of the emotions. Nobody wants to be around you. Yeah, but so, sickness of the emotion then gets into the flesh. Yes. It is the, un emotions are unseen. You can't see them. Oh, there's an emotion over there. You can see yeah. the reaction of emotions on people's faces, but that's the unseen realm. And that that's in there when the heart and the spirit is broken, then it opens the door so that everything can come in. Sickness, disease, all of these things, uh, resentment, bitterness. Yes. All of these things are open when a person's heart gets broken. That's right. And so then what we really need to do is learn how to build that hedge of thorns or and what it's saying is a boundary. That's you know, right. Kathy, a lot of people think that it, you just should let people run over you and just, you know, you're just, well, I, I just, I'm gonna love them. I'm just not gonna say anything that you're not supposed to stand up for yourself that, you know, this is not what the word of God teaches. No, it's not. And this is something I saw pretty quickly uh, as we grew in the Lord, Len and I, and we went out in the ministry. 
I discovered that many people in the church had confused or flip-flop the authority of the believer and the love walk. <laughs> <laughs> when they needed to be using the authority of the believer and saying, not to me, you don't. I'm not going to receive that rejection, that hurt. I'm not going to let that tear me down and ruin my day. I'm going to move forward instead. Um, in Jesus' name, I don't receive that. Yes. When they should have been using that, they were thinking, well, I just have to put up with this and love them. They thought it was love. Yeah. But it was a deception because they yes. needed to be protecting their heart. Yes. Yes. Well, to me, as I was the other day, I was mowing the yard. And you, you, and, you and Lynn. Uh, you got a big yard in there. Yeah, I know. I got a big yard. <laughs> but you and Lynn laugh at me all the time because I tell you about revelations I got when I went out to feed the cows or the sheep or you know, something, but I was mowing the yard the other day and I was really thinking about this. And I realized that people have a tendency just to throw themselves open to whatever comes. Well, whatever happens, you know, and you, those same people, if you told them, take your wallet and go out and lay it on the sidewalk. When you eat, just lay your money out on the floor or lay it, leave it laying on the table or go away from home and leave your, all your doors open. They'd say, are you crazy? That's right. I'm not leaving my doors open. I'm going to lock my doors because there might be a, a robber out there or a thief. That's right. I'm not going to leave my money, my wallet, my credit cards laying on the table. Somebody might take them. And yet when you talk about matters of the heart, they just leave it laying everywhere. And so we, that whoever can We can't do rob. it in that. We cannot afford to do that, especially in the days we're living in, where every commercial, every newscast, every bulletin board you drive down the highway billboard has something unedifying on it. Mm -hmm. Fear-filled, mm -hmm. discouraging, most of it's lies, and it will bring destruction to our lives. Yes. We can't let it. Because it enters in through, like you said, the ear gate, the eye gate, and through your own words. Because if you're not careful, if you're around all of this negative talk and say, you know, even, you know, you watch television, you see these commercials for all these um, ads, you know, are you depressed? Are you <laughs> this? We have a drug for that. You know, and you start thinking, well, I have felt a little depressed lately. If you don't watch it, that stuff will get in your spiritual production center. Yes, it'll get it will. into your ears and your eyes and it'll get down your spiritual production center and you'll say, oh, wow, I am depressed. I didn't know I was depressed, but I am depressed. Maybe I should go get this drug. Yeah, first you think about it mm -hmm. instead of casting down that thought and screaming out, no, not me. Then you say it to someone. And when yes. you release those words, then Satan has legal ground to try to really put a depression yes. on you. You know, the other day I, I got a new iPad, so I was in a store and I was talking to this young man and he got excited because he knew our ministry. And he started telling me this about his girlfriend that was on these drugs for depression and anxiety and all this sort of thing. <clears throat> and he told me, he said, he said, I started telling her, you have control over your mind. Amen. You have power over your own mind, your own thoughts. Get a hold of your mind, gain control of it, put the Word of God in it. Yes. And she was, you know, he said at first she was like, what, what are you into? What are you talking about? You know? <laughs> the truth. <clears throat> it's like, are, are you nuts? He said, no, I'm telling you, here's what it says in the Word of God. And you know what she did, what he said, and she's off of all those drugs and is Great. Praise God. Because it's lack of knowledge. People just don't know that you don't have to swallow all of that that comes after you. That's right. And I really have grown to love and respect and really endeavor to do it myself. Uh, strong Christian friends and ministers that watch what they hear, watch what they say, and the eyes. Yes. And a couple of uh, preacher friends of mine, I won't say who they are, but they're very strong on prosperity. 
<laughs> I have to tell you, this sounds funny, but it isn't. Yeah. It's the truth. They were in a third world country and it was supposed to be a vacation. It was supposed to be a nice area. And they had called a cab and the cab pulled up and both of them had taught prosperity for years and taught many people how to come from poverty and that into increase, which is so wonderful. Yes. The cab was falling to pieces. It was filthy. It looked like it wasn't going to make it anywhere. And the man had never taken the slightest care of it. It smelled. And, <laughs> and one of them opened the door to get in and the other one said, don't get in that cab. It'll hurt your faith. Don't do it. Don't even let your eyes look around it. Don't listen to what the man may have to say. Don't do it. And you know, I respect that. Well, I do too, because number one, you want to listen to that inward witness of the Spirit. Yes. And if the Spirit said, don't get in that cab, you better not get in that cab. That's right. And number two, yes, it makes a difference. I remember hearing a story a long time ago, and it kind of goes along with that, where a man was out of a job. He and his wife only had a certain amount of money left, and he was going to for a job interview. And so they went shopping because they didn't have the clothes. And so he found a really nice jacket that was just fit perfectly, it was gorgeous. It just He put it on, his wife said, that's almost all the money we have left. I don't, you know, but he said, it makes me feel successful. Yes. And right then the wife caught it. If it makes him feel successful, then he'll walk into that job interview with the attitude of success. That's right. And the man got the job. Of course he did. Now what if he'd gone in and being concerned about, you know, his torn threadbare <laughs> jacket, you know, do you think he would have exuded the confidence that they would have wanted to, no. to hire him. So, yeah, it's important that we pay attention to all of those things. We need to keep our thumb on the mute button if we're watching television. Oh my goodness. Mute the commercials, mute bad mute, news, mute, mute liberals. My husband said the mute button is wearing off on our remote. <laughs> you can't even read the M-U-T-E anymore because of we do it. Okay, so let, I have a scripture here. I've got to read this one. Give too. It to I us. just love the book of Proverbs. Gabby. Oh, I do too. Just love it. Okay, Proverbs fourteen thirty says, "A sound heart is the life and health of the body." Glory to God. So, if your heart is sound, if your heart, and I'm not talking about the physical heart. I'm talking about your spiritual production center. You're protecting it. You're keeping it weeded. A lot of people today don't know about farming, but weeds try to come in to the field. I drove yesterday past one of our uh, uh, cornfields and there was weeds growing up. You've got to mm -hmm. get out there and get that stuff out because it will multiply. So how do you get a weed out of your heart, Annette? Well, the first thing you've got to do is find out how it got there. Yes. <laughs> if you put it there by speaking it yourself, I go back and I go, I, when I say it, sometimes I do, I, I have messed up. And when I do, I go, X that, no, stop. I do, I do not mean that. I, I undo that, dissolve, cease to exist, replace it with and I say what the replacement is. Yes. I, that is not what it. I want. I want it out of my field. I don't want that seed in my spiritual production center. You got to root it up. And I, I say many times, I repent for that. I cover it with the blood, wash it away, and I reject it. I cast it down. Yes. And then you do need to say something to replace it. Yes. Like I'm favored by God. Highly favored. Everything I do is successful. Everything I yes. put my hand to prospers. Yes. And you don't feel like saying it all the time. No. No, you don't. No one does. But because of knowing the benefit, we make ourselves say it. Yes. And when you make yourself say it a few times, all of a sudden you'll go, oh, I think I'm feeling better. Yeah. I, I think I'm more confident. 
and then you're hooked. Yeah. You'll That's when the good it. things start coming up in, in your spiritual production center. It starts coming up yes. and it changes the feelings. Yes. Changes that. Okay, here's another scripture. Give it to us. Proverbs 15, 13, 14. A glad heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Yes. In last program, we talked about sorrow of the heart. Yes. So we need to have a cheerful heart. And then there's that scripture that you know, everybody knows. Um, Proverbs 17, 22 says, a happy heart is good medicine. Yes. And a cheerful mind works healing. But a broken spirit dries up the bones. Yes. Now I have to tell you about a scripture that has been a keynote in the, my emotional freedom in my Christian life. And I believe it can help so many of you that are watching. We all know that 1 Peter 2.24 says, by his stripes we were healed. But very few of us know 1 Peter 2.23, which is right above it. Oh yeah? And that says this, when he was reviled, Jesus, he reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Uh -huh. You say, well, what does that mean in, in staying free uh, emotionally and keeping your production center clear to produce mm -hmm. good things? Let me give you an example. Early in our ministry, we were driving um, to a church and on the way, uh, Len told me about a letter he got from a pastor that had a very small church that accused Len of not being willing to go to a small church, which couldn't have been further from the truth. I guess this, the, I, I now know this pastor suffered from some rejection yeah. or he wouldn't have written something right. like that. Right. Wasn't true. What, you know, you can, take, uh, you can take offense for someone else. And yes. I took offense for Len. <laughs> he wasn't even offended. I took offense and <laughs> We stopped at a Burger King. He went in to get us some Cokes. While he was in there, I was seething angry. My heart was filled with anger. And I said, Lord, I'm going to write him a letter and straighten him out. <laughs> yeah. And oh. I had read that first Peter 2:23, okay. And the Holy Spirit brought it across my spirit clear as a bell, Annette. When he was reviled, he reviled not again. Yeah. He's our pattern. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed it to him that judgeth righteously. Well, who's that? It's the Father, but why did it say him that judgeth righteously? Because it, the Lord wanted to bring out the aspect of the Father that's the righteous judge. Yeah. So I said, I gritted my teeth. I said, okay, I don't want to do this, but I'm going to obey you, Lord. I repent for wanting to revile him. I refuse to revile him. Forgive me, Lord. I won't write the letter. I commit him and me and this whole situation to the righteous judge, to you, Father. Guess what happened instantly? All the anger drained out of me, and I felt fine and great and happy. Yes. See, that's not written that if you do this scripture, you'll feel free. You have to do it to experience yes. it. Yes. And I do that over and over again yeah. to this day, and it always works. That's being a doer of the word. It keeps that production center. Yeah. See, got to remember that from today's show. Our heart is our production center. Yes, and we want to guard it with all diligence, vigilance above all that we guard. And what do we want to guard it from? Negative speaking, abusive people, controlling people, hot-tempered people, judgment. Yes. We want to guard it even from our own judgment. What would have happened if you hadn't have moved out from that? That anger could have made you sick. It could have That's right. caused all kinds of issues. I could have hurt that man more by writing an ugly letter. He didn't need that. No, it sounds like he needed um, to read the scripture about being accepted in the beloved. He and, did. Yeah. He did. Yeah. Well, man, this has gone fast and it's been so good. Keep God's Word in the center of your heart. Yes. All right. Well, I have a two CD 
series that I recorded specifically to help you become the person that God designed you to be, powerful, effective, successful, and confident in yes. who you are in God. It is called Changing the Course of Your Life. There are two very important areas that will defeat you or empower your life. What you say, what you tell others, and most importantly, what you tell yourself, self-talk. In this series, I give you specific details on what works, what doesn't work, what will keep you bound, and what will move you forward. Now also, because I believe in the author of this book, Charles Capps. I do too. <laughs> I want to offer my father's book, God's Image of You, along with this CD series. This book has never been offered on television before, but I want you to have it because of the powerful principles inside. Now this is offer 25, 13, $22 plus shipping and handling. It includes the two CDs, Changing the Course of Your Life, plus the book by Charles Capps, God's Image of You. Call 877-396-9400 or go to caps.tv. Now some of the chapter titles in this book are Seeing Yourself as God Sees You, which is so important, Created to Have Dominion, Doers of the Word are Winners in Life, and created in the image of God. Isn't oh, that are powerful? Tremendous. Now, I want to read a little bit here. It says, it is not so much what or who you are that determines your fate in life, but what or who you imagine yourself to be. Your image can carry you to heights of success or plunge you into the depths of defeat and despair. Powerful book. Offer $25.13, $22, plus shipping and handling. Those are so anointed, Annette. Amen. Anointed books. Also, don't forget, you can order the DVD of this three-part series Kathy and I have recorded. It will include last week's program, Overcoming Rejection and Inferiority, today's show on protecting your heart and setting new boundaries, and next week's program, How to Harness the Power of Your Thoughts. All three programs on one DVD for $20 plus shipping and handling. Join us next week. You sure don't want to miss it because it's going to be great. To order a copy of today's show or any product offered on this program, call 1-877-396-9400 or visit our website at caps.tv where you can order downloads of our MP3 teachings, eBooks, and watch other programs on demand. This broadcast has been sponsored by Caps Ministries and is dedicated to helping you put the Word of God to work in the everyday circumstances of your life.